Hello, Hi everybody. We've got the big dramatic five, four, three, two, one over here. So much fun. Um, you guys, we have so much fun getting ready for this. Um, I hope that you're as excited as we are. We yes. have some, we have two, two things we're going to really focus on today. Mm -hmm. One of them is coasters mm -hmm. and the other is layered stencils. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I've never personally painted some of the things that we're going to talk about today, but mm. Patty has, and these stencils are a lifesaver for those really tedious, terrible yes. things that you want to paint, but you don't. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like, so one of them is roses. I'm going to show the roses today. Um, <clears throat> roses are an acquired skill set. Like, people have chased the rose skill train mm -hmm. for, um, like, a... 20 years and still feel frustrated with their roses. So we took a rose and we pulled it apart into layers and then we made seven, I believe it's seven steps. Yeah. Yep. Seven piece steps of stencils that you can lay over and over and then just do the little swirling technique. Mm -hmm. That's where the swirling technique came from. Okay. So the swirling came from doing the layered stencils because you have to swirl. I've been trying to figure yeah. out where the swirling technique came from. Because the areas from. are small. Mm -hmm. So you have to swirl to make it really fade. And so when you're going and stenciling through to make layers, um, I'll just sneak peek here. This is um, my little sample guy. Um, to make all of these layered petals, you have to, um, you have to swirl. So ta-da, ta -da. we knew we'd get there. That's awesome. Okay, so we have that today. I have already shared the link for our layered stencil collection today. It is on sale. All of our layered stencils are 30% off. And we also threw our coasters in with mm -hmm. it because a lot of the coasters are shaped specifically for these layered stencils. Yeah, we have, um, if, Rusty, if you can get this down here, um, the round is not a layered stencil. Mm -hmm. But it is really cool that they fit inside these little um, mm -hmm. these boards. And this isn't glued together. You have to actually glue them together yourself. But it makes it super easy to paint. But this one is the rose. Um, that's what that looks like. This is the grapes. Mm -hmm. This is just a plain shape. And then this is the butterflies. So what I like about them is you can display them. Yes. You could also just stack them up. You know, whatever whatever your jam is. And the, the square one we have in a collection so all of these are going to come individual as coasters or you can get a set of coasters without the base mm -hmm. with a stencil um there's the rose the grapes the square one comes with a layered bird stencil and then we have the butterfly or you can get them as a set with the base so there are lots of options i think we have 74 products in oh our gosh, sale today so and i want to say so the reason there are layered stencils is because um, I don't know how many of you have ever painted a butterfly and tried, mm -hmm. to, do, tried to do all of that um, butterfly black line work. It's such a drag. And then if you want to have a beautiful fade um, behind, bigger drag. Like there's so much work. Roses are hard. Birds are hard. Um, grapes are really hard. I've got a really cool grape example over here. Um, grapes are hard. Um, we have a pheasant. We have chickens. Mm -hmm. um, these are all things that you, you can't quite tell where to place the thing. Yeah. You know, like, where does that layer go? Where, does, where do I put my next stroke? Mm -hmm. And so out of teaching for so many years and all of that, we created the layered stencils just to be just so helpful. So, for example, grapes. Um, the grape layer stencil, this is a project that I did years ago. This is on a, a collage paper. But knowing where to put all of the shading and the highlighting on each bunch of grapes is really hard, but this is so easy because all you do is swirl, and I'm gonna show you that techni technique here, um, to get them in each layer. And I don't know how many layers, I can't remember how many are on this one, but you know, five, six layers, and it all lines up perfectly, and you make these perfectly gorgeous grapes. So this is blue grapes, here's red grapes, here is green grapes, and here are yellow grapes. So, and you can do all of these. You can do red roses, you can mm -hmm. do coral roses, you can do yeah. yellow roses, um, whatever you want. And like, um, I brought this guy out. This was done with texture paste, 
<clears throat> but you could easily, um, just like on this little tissue box, you can put two or three different size roses to make just a really cute project. Yeah. And it's just so much fun. And I want to show off the detail. Um, this is a scroll stencil. What's really cool about this is I did drop shadow with the scroll. It, drop shadow isn't just for lettering. Drop shadow can be for scrolling and any other detail that you want to do as well. It just really makes it pop. Okay. Let me make a couple quick announcements. <clears throat> yep. um, we already talked about the sale. Don't forget to check out our YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. Oh, um, all right, here we go. Our ready, second, ready, so ready? we... <laughs> da, 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 da. We are um, very close to hitting our 5,000 subscriber goal, mm -hmm. and Patty has talked me into releasing our prize of what we are going to release once we hit that goal. So we are a couple hundred people away from subscribing, and um, that is, it's just a big, when you start a YouTube channel, you start with zero, and um, you know you have a lot of content, and you have a lot of stuff um, that you want to say, and show, and share, and all of that, and so sometimes it's just nice to have those goals. So we made a goal of 5,000, it's a really nice little number, <clears throat> and if we hit, when we hit that goal, which we will hit it soon yes but when we hit that goal we are going to release the brand of bulk paint that we use mm -hmm. we're going to release a color um tool mm -hmm. that you can see and have one of your very own yes we have it. it's very special and it's got value scale and it's got um, it's got like so many tools within one little tool and we're going to make it be a giveaway um with purchase once we achieve our goal for a a short time yeah it's just yeah it's just gonna be a, like a one day two day and kind then of, it yeah. will be available yeah. for, purchase for purchase after yeah. that but it's going to be very it's gonna be so cool it's epic yeah we get asked almost every day what color did you use on that project mm -hmm. what color did you use on this and so then and the answer's not easy because um my color's not gonna be your color right yeah yeah and and if you we guys are, like this idea? Yes, we already had, um, Donna said, <clears throat> this is amazing. You guys should hit the goal really soon. You're very deserving of it. Thank you, Yay. Donna. Um, but we're going to give you a couple different um, brands that you can cross-reference. Yeah, we're, yeah, in case we're not you making have, it just one brand. Yeah, it's, yes. Yeah. It's going to be, it's going to be Literally, super Literally, there has been, um, I think it's the hex code. I, if I'm speaking wrong, mm -hmm. don't. Nope, it is. Yeah. It's the hex so code. So the hex code. Um, a craft brand and then another brand that we'll talk about later, but um, we're cross-referencing them all and making them all work together so you will have a good reference. Plus, having the visual, <sighs> so good. It is. So, yeah. so good. I cannot Yes, we wait. are super pumped about it. So, tell your friends to follow yeah. us on YouTube because you guys Subscribe. need this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You, well, yeah, you need it now. <laughs> I want it now and I want, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about um, color mixing today mm -hmm. and so that's one of the reasons we decided to announce this today is because you're gonna want to see the colors and then we will um, in the future probably start referencing the number that we use so that yes. you can easily um, and putting see. it in the description mm -hmm. of our videos yeah yeah so that way you know we used 18 48 and 29 mm -hmm. you know and then that'll make it easier for you guys that if you want to create exactly um, you know, a pink like this is going to be really tricky to match if you're trying to match it. So it, it'll yeah. just make it easier. We've been working towards this for a year and a half. Oh my gosh, it's yeah. been so long. Such so a long. pain. <laughs> um, we do have, last week on our YouTube channel, we released the Welcome to the Lake porch sign. And it was, it's a fabulous lesson on making a weathered, rustic, mm -hmm. antiqued background. We actually had someone just message us and ask us, hey, how did you paint this sample that I found on your website? And I was like, oh, actually, we wet sanded that. Check yeah. out our new video. You guys, the wet sanding technique is to die for. Mm -hmm. Like, you want to remember to know that you know how to do that because it makes it so authentically weathered. Yeah. It makes it it makes it makes perfect. Mm -hmm. And then this weekend, we are releasing a video that... Um, I did about the biggest mistakes that people make while stenciling and how to avoid those. So if you're having bleeding under or <clears throat> any of the tragedies that we all face, yeah. then we well, and you know, and you never know what you're going to come up against. Mm -hmm. Like, and even people who are experienced need these lessons. So I think, I think it's super fun. Agreed. 
All right, um, I think we're ready to get into this. We do have some giveaways today, so make sure that you are commenting mm -hmm. and um, we'll be picking some giveaway winners. All right, let's get right into it. Um, number one, I wanna talk about these Mylar as a palette paper sheets. Okay, this is the one that I ran through the paint. Um, this is the one that I was using to um, do my little sample. Um, needed to figure out how to mix the colors. Um, when I did, um, back in the past, before I used the limited palette, um, they would say that I was a bottle baby, and that meant that I didn't use any color without, I didn't mix any color, you know? So um, now I'm a bottle baby, but I have to mix colors if I want a certain shade and value. So this is what I mixed on. Um, this comes attached to this piece. It's a great big long old piece of Mylar. And we have been shipping these out for you guys for free mm -hmm. um, because they are a scrap piece, but we have found that it works perfectly as a piece of palette paper. So instead of your paper plate, um, you can just use this. Now, this is messy, so having more than one of them is going to be handy because you really don't want to wash a whole bunch of wet paint down your sink, so you want to kind of get it so you can scrape it. But you can just soak that in warm water. I wiped it off with a paper towel. Soak it in warm, soapy water. Um, we have a YouTube video um, that shows you how to clean your stencils, and this is the material that we use for our stencils. So that is something that we are currently, and this is going to go away. It's not going to be free forever, but right now it is. Um, so when you place an order, you get one of those big, long sheets for free. And you can cut it up, use it as a masking tool, that was in two weeks ago live? Um, we did it in, with this live. Okay. Or with this video, mm -hmm. we did it and showed how to mask the sailboat okay. using yeah, yeah. this using piece. Using the big long, because yes. the sailboat is really big. Okay, so let's talk about color mixing right here. I'm gonna come over here. I've got an offset palette knife. Um, this is gonna be the one that you want to use. Um, Steve, can you see this on yeah. the down shot? Not on the down shot, but we can see it in that piece. Okay, maybe I'm gonna move this over. So I've got it taped to the table. Let me move it in just a little bit so I get it both ways. Okay, so what we have here, um, when you have pink, you're gonna have a hard time um, controlling it. Um, what Carrie was telling me she was gonna paint this project and she was gonna do a pink background and I'm like, no way. it's gonna be so gonna blown be out. <laughs> pink, is gonna, pink is so easy to blow out. Um, if I painted something this color, and there was a lot of it, it's gonna be really, really too strong. So pink is a really hard color to manage. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna to tone. So I've got a really strong um, dragon fruit kind of color, and then I've got a Christmassy green. Okay, now why does this work? This works because these are opposite on the color wheel. So if you look at any color wheel, go online, um, you look for the thing, on the opposite, um, I'm trying to think of other examples, like yellow and blue, eh, maybe yellow and purple. That might be right. Anyway, I don't have one sitting right here, but these guys are on the opposite, so when you mix your opposites together, then you neutralize. A lot of times you're married to your opposite. Um, there, my husband's the quiet one that will fill out the paperwork, and I'm the little bit crazy one that doesn't like to do that, you know? So. We neutralize each other. I have strengths, he has strengths, mm -hmm. and when we bring them together, then it makes them both more magic. Okay, so we're gonna take our red, which is that dragon fruity pink. Gina said, controlling pink is like controlling a teenage daughter. Amen, Gina, well put. Okay, <laughs> so what we're gonna do though is we're gonna take the toning steps. So we're gonna take our green, and we're gonna just take a little bit of that green, and let's dab underneath here. A um, little bit of the green, a little dab will do you. And you go there, and I think I've got that just a teeny bit. Well, no, that's pretty. Okay, so that's my dark pink, okay? So then I can go in. When, when I'm using my palette knife, I always like to keep a paper towel there so I can just squeeze it and clean it off. I can go into my white, and I can take a little bit of that pink, and I can tone that. White is a toner. Any color you mix with paint is a toner. So um, I can make it a lighter dark pink. Okay, so we can make um, all the tones. You can take your pink and you can go over here. And I'm actually gonna do it the other way. You always wanna mix your dark 
into your light. Otherwise, you can end up with a lake of color when one takes over. So I'm going to use the white. <clears throat> Take a little teeny bit of that pink. And what this also does for us is it also, oh, that looks like a little flower. Um, what this also does for this is it keeps everything in the family tree. So when you have a color that you're trying to, I'm gonna make shading colors, right? So I'm gonna have my light color, my highlight color, I'm gonna have my shading colors. And when I'm doing that, if I had a pink that was here, okay, this is a pretty color, but this is way purple. Okay, so if I have this pink and this pink, they're gonna kind of clash. Okay, so we don't wanna have clashing colors. So sometimes it's nice, especially when you're making mixed colors to make up like a palette. And then we're gonna talk about that in just a second. I'm gonna try not to get too far down the rabbit hole here because there's a lot of places. Color is a whole theory. And the, the theory word means it's really just suggestions. Okay, what we want to achieve here today is we want a basing color, we want a highlighting color, we want a first shade color and a last shade color. So we want four pinks. And that is what is gonna give us a pretty rose. And when you're painting a red rose, when you're painting any of these other color roses, that's what you'd want, is you'd want something that will highlight, something that will shade. And then something that uber shades, okay? And the uber shade is that fourth shading color. You don't have to have it. You can sometimes just reuse your shading color, but let's get started. Okay, so these stencils come in. Okay, there's a first layer, and now I'll need that sheet. <clears throat> so we're gonna have this sheet available for you guys to just um, go ahead and reference. Um, yeah, and I'm this... gonna upload it to our Facebook page as soon as our live is done, and then I'm also going to send it out in a newsletter, so you'll be able to have it in a couple of different places. Yeah, and so this is just handy for you to be able to see where you're gonna put the colors because these don't look, they don't look right. You know, there's a whole lot going on right there. Um, you know, and you don't even know what's going to happen. But each of these overlaps and builds this whole swirling, beautiful rose. And um, we can say thank you to Dustin for figuring that stuff out. Okay, so one thing that I did do is I started with mine backwards, which you can do. You can paint on both sides of these, but I picked up the other side um, when I prepped this guy. So this does not have the leaves on there, so I wanna show you what I would do to handle that um, because the leaves just can be free, not free-handed, but sort of. Okay, so I'm just gonna lay this base coat. This is for the pink. This is only for the rose itself. I'm gonna take my triple threat and I'm going to trace oops, where the leaf goes. Okay, so wherever those leaves are, Give that a little trace. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then what happens is I get that outline and then I just took my little flat brush and I just based those green. <clears throat> and before I did my color, I did the shading that I'm gonna show you on the pink just to get that down and done. I could use my multi-masker to mask that off as well. Okay. So now that is how I started with base one, and that's where I'm at. So now we're gonna to go to layer two. Okay, and I am backwards. So my stencils, they have, um, they have the name of the stencil down here and the number. And so I know if my writing is backwards that I've got it the right way. <clears throat> it's also, Rusty, I don't know if you can get that. It's etched with the shape of the coaster. If you were, and it's also if on the other roses that you would paint on flat, um, they're etched with the shape of the rose so that you know exactly where this is supposed to be lying. This now, it doesn't have important. the etch, though, of the leaves, correct? It does it's on this one rose. because mm -hmm. the leaves are um, part of the coaster itself. They do not. Um, I think on the other ones, there might be leaves. I didn't go look. Sure. Yeah, we'll go look. But um, I believe... On the other roses, um, there are not okay. leaves. Okay, so not leaves. Okay. And then on the grapes, there are, though, I'm pretty sure. Um, because the grape leaves now. are different. <clears throat> All right. 
The attack of the allergies is getting me, man. The grapes do have leaves. There are, um, with, with the grapes stencils, it comes with seven stencils. You get five grape layers and then two leaf, leaf layers. layers. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the leaves um, on the leaves on the roses are tend to be a little bit just um, triangles, um, so those were not where we were thinking. Um, but the on the grapes, holy moly, you got to have a little bit of that going on, <clears throat> especially with the um, with the uh, the vine and all of that stuff. Okay, so and we have a couple questions okay. asking if they're numbered. They are numbered. Yes. So they, uh, some of, a couple of them, depending on the size, will come on one sheet only. Mm -hmm. But then other ones are separate, and the separate ones are numbered. Yeah, and then like this one is um, layered part two of seven. Mm -hmm. So you know how many you're supposed yes. to have as well. And it has, um, like it's a CMBN 282, so you have the number as well. And it says part two of seven, yes. plus it says layer two. <clears throat> and then they co correspond with these guys. Okay, so we get that on there like so, and we look at our layer two. Now, unfortunately, I am backwards because that's how I roll some days, but I'm just gonna invert it in my head. So on this great big C looking one right here, it shows a shadow over there. So everywhere where you see a dark color, that's where you're gonna shade. And then we're gonna use our steps so we can go into our first pink and then we can go into our second pink, mm -hmm. our second shadow. I'm switching to these um, Mezzaluna brushes. If you have the little domes, they work pretty good, but we gotta get kind of skinny. And this is a dome brush that is doesn't have the thickness. So I can get really skinny and fine, and they're super, super um, dense, just exactly like the other brushes are, but these come in Look at the size of that puppy. Every now and again, you just need a tiny, tiny mm -hmm. brush. Um, these are magic for doing what we're about to do. I'm going to start with the medium size. And I'm going to get into my first shadow color. And we're going to do it just like stenciling normal. We're going to wipe off and offload on the paper towel. Okay, and so on here, we're going to go with our shadow. And I think I'm going to skip to number two. When you offload and you're doing your stenciling, you know how it can look so powdery and so sheer? Um, that's exactly the technique that we're going for here. We want it to be super, super sheer. And that's why I'm switching colors because it's so sheer that it's not really even showing up. Okay, so I can do this in a row. I can do it in the swirl. And this just allows me to control it. And then if I want to go backwards, like there's a couple places on this that show a very dark, I could go in this and I could be like, here's my very dark. And so we'll do this piece next because it does have a very dark. And it's interesting, this one, so never make assumptions when you're doing these. Um, use, use the chart, use the thing, um, because this one goes on this side and then it goes on the bottom side of that C. And that's super important because this is gonna be laying next to something else that we do later on. Okay, so we'll go at the top part of the C. And then we'll be on the bottom of the C down here. Alicia asked if a tiny dauber would work for the shadow. I don't think that it would. It's too it, small of an it's, area. It's, yeah, this is, this is a big, I mean, it's a coaster. Mm -hmm. And it's so it's like, you know, four inches, but there's a lot of little layers in here. So I don't think that that would work at all. You could use your tiny, tiny little dome brush, but I find that it's just not skinny enough. But what I love about this is when we're looking at our roses, right? And so we're all on the inside of this rose. And now I'm going to switch to my slightly bigger brush just to be able to make that fade. Anybody can do this. Like literally, if I handed this to a six-year-old and showed them what to do, they could do this. So um, this makes it so approachable to do a really hard paint, which is roses. Roses are, I, I do, we do our emails and I do emails and emails and emails um, for the, the brush painting site that we have. Um, so many emails about roses because 
people want to paint really pretty roses, but they're really tough to learn how. Okay, so now I'm going to go back into this guy over here, and I'm going to give him a little bit of darkening. And I don't really have to work at all to do this. And now we're over here. And we do have some deep darks over here. So you want to make sure that you feather over here really light pressure around once you start fading into the leaf or to the petal. <clears throat> so I'm just kind of like swooshing it just a little bit to get it a little bit um, deeper. We'll go in and deepen. So it's like a paint by number, but we took away all your own numbers. Okay, and then we'll go over here and we'll deepen over here. Okay, and then we go to this little guy right over here. It's quite dark. And now we highlight. Okay, so we'll go into a medium sized brush. I'll bop back and forth between two of these. And we just wanna get those highlights right on the edge. And you can scumble over your shadow <clears throat> and it won't matter. Just make sure that you feather it out. How are we doing out there? We're good. I have some people asking about how to get on the newsletter so that they can get our newsletters. The newsletters, guys, if you aren't already signed up for that, if you head over to studior12.com, you will get a pop-up with a big spinny wheel, and you can put in your email address and spin the wheel, mm -hmm. and um, there's a chance you could win a coupon when you do that. Um, you can only do that once. But our newsletters, we send out six days a week. You and can ignore have, them, you can put them in wherever, but that's where you're going to find the deals and the sales. Well, that, and we also just have really great information, yeah. information um, on how to use different tools and how to use different stencils different ways. Patty and I sit down and I'm like, okay, I'm doing a, a sale on this brush. Tell me five ways to use this brush. And Yeah, or even um, Carrie has a way of doing the drop shadow that super saves 18 steps. Mm -hmm. And so she shares those kinds of things as well. Okay, let's do a reveal. <clears throat> and so we'll pop this up. And then that's our first layer. So very, very, very interesting, right? You're like, ah, what am I doing? So next layer, three of seven. So we'll go next. We line it up with the etching. It is a little bit easy to walk when you're doing this. Um, this is on a raised surface. Sometimes that can be a, a little bit of a pita, but um, it's important that you just know to keep it super lined up and watch your all your edges. Okay, so now we are on layer three and now we're gonna go into the dark. Don't let these brushes sit there too long. You don't want everybody drying up. Okay, so we do our shadow, same as before. This is super repeaty pants. So I think the idea of mixing the colors is one of the big takeaways that I think you can get from this lesson is um, not being afraid of mixing. If you notice, when I'm getting ready to lift away from the stencil, I'm down on two sides. And then what I do is I let go and kind of give myself a different, sometimes your fingers can get sticky. Um, so I try to um, give my, get, get a release first. Okay, so we'll go here. We have some people really excited to get these and try the layered stencils. They are fun. They you guys, fun. did you look at that pheasant. Oh my gosh, on a on a Thanksgiving tray um, or anything mm -hmm. like that. Like, I've wanted to paint a pheasant forever, and I was just like overwhelmed by all of the detail on it. And um, I I was just like, Dustin, you have to help me. <sighs> well, we have a really cool rustic rooster that is amazing we have cardinal 
We have the grapes and the pear. We have a pear and leaves. Um, the pear is fun. We have, we've just released recently the um, sugar skull. And so we have the sugar skull and then we also have a skull surface that goes with it. And those are a layered one as well. Um, what else do we have here? We have a regular skull. We have a couple of different kinds of roses, several different birds. We have pansies, um, chickadees, bluebirds, eastern birds. And we have one. So if you watched our spooky tall porch um, design that had the castle with the lit up windows in it we also have some little salt box houses that are very farmhouse that have the outline of the house and then the windows which is super cool as well so we have several candy canes Ooh. animals when you make a mistake and don't offload <laughs> uh, you will know it right away i basically started base coating okay here's layer two boom 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 and it starts to look like something. <clears throat> oh, that was layer three. I'm a dirty, rotten liar. Okay, and whoop, hit over. So how cool is this that you can just line up your rows <clears throat> and then do the thing? Okay, layer four. When it takes the guesswork out of it, yeah. you know exactly where to paint every single time. We have a um, new friend joining us today. Todd is Hi, on Todd. YouTube with us. He said, oh, Lana, it's Lana. She said, um, I'm Lana and I'm watching from the Midwest. I just found your site yesterday and Yay. have been watching past videos and luckily she has Tuesdays off. So now she can watch That's us live on Tuesdays. Fabulous. Yeah, I think, um, like, we try so hard with the content, you guys. Anything that you want to know about, please let us know, mm -hmm. and we will um, absolutely put something together. Like, we are just about y'all. Okay. Our friend Joyce asked, Patty once tried using a wet paper towel to put her brushes in so she could use yeah. them again. Did that work? Not really well. For a very short amount of time. Yeah. If you're going to go into, if you're going to be painting something black and then you have a couple little things you want to do white and then come back to black, then that could potentially work, but over an extended time. Yeah, and the, the moisture of the paper towel kind of made the paint and the brush a little bit wet, and so that made the paint behave badly, mm -hmm. um, kind of schmeary, and so... That was a problem. So just using the baggy mm -hmm. um, seems like a better fix. Okay, this is the next layer four, and now look at how look at how fast that is. And I'm talking and yammering and stuff, but look at how neat that is. That it just starts becoming the rose. Oh, I feel like we need a song play here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Bette Midler, come to me, baby. Such a good copyright strike. So yeah, probably so, probably so. Um, Rhonda says it's amazing how real it looks. Gina says she thinks she's gonna have to order the roses. Glenna says this makes roses easy. Yep. This is, and you can see like, I literally could close my eyes. Okay, let me find my bearings and then I'm going to do this right here. I can do it with my eyes shut, okay? <laughs> This is a new YouTube channel. Patty paints with her eyes closed. <laughs> but it is like literally that easy. Uh, and I'm not even, I'm not even being like infomercially. Um, it is, it is easy. Yes. And, um, you know, some of the things like, so we've been, we've had a website for 20 years and um, we have 6,000 plus stencil titles. We have um, all of them in not all of them, but many of them in five or six sizes. So that makes, you know, six times five, you know, is that 30,000? No. Yes. Yes, it is. Six times five, 3,000. No. no 6,000. Six, yes. 6,000 times five yes, is 30,000 30, different stencil titles in a way. Um, so like, sorry, math. <laughs> <laughs> this is why we paint. <laughs> this is why I'm the artist. Um, but so you have all of these you know, these things. And sometimes these have been sitting over there in cold storage for a hot second. Mm -hmm. And we were like, wait, 
layered stencils. This would be fun. And then it's like, wait, we already have these. We have these. Um, our friend Vicki says her birthday is Friday. Nice. Happy birthday. And she's going to have her husband get her some layering stencils. I like it. You know, husbands never know what to get us. So, yeah, just send them to the website and be like, gift, gift certificate. We might have to do the rooster someday. We've had a lot of people saying that they really, they really like the rooster. Yeah, you should see the bird done, mm -hmm. the, um, the uh, blue jay. Um, Laureen just said she received her layer bird stencils just today. <gasps> cool. So, Laureen, you have to share pictures with us when you paint them. Do not be afraid. Okay, so now we are on the next layer. Look at how cool that looks. Like... I'm excited and I already know what's going to happen. Glennis asked if the paper tells which colors to use on which layer. They do not. Um, they just give you the shading. Mm -hmm. um, we do have, um, they're just unfortunately branded with our other website, but we do have the step-by-step -step worksheets. And so we will work on getting those rebranded for over on this site and get on that. I think that's gonna be gonna be a necessary. Okay, so making sure that I think the most important thing that you can remember with this is to line up the etch marks with the shape of whatever you're doing. So make sure that if you're on flat wood and you're not doing like a shape of wood, just make sure that you keep everything lined up and that's gonna be fine. Um, everything will be easy then. Okay, so we're on layer six of seven. So we're down here. Now this has got an interesting one. <clears throat> it goes a little kind of skitty wampus across there. And when this one layers over this one, it kind of cuts through the middle of it. So that's why it's important to have these things. Like we had to be able to tell um, on a rose, like on a bird, it's easy to know, like this is a saddle feather area, you know, this is the rooster tail area. Those are obvious. You cannot do that with a rose petal. Like it is not obvious, it is not easy. So um, that's why we had to come up with this. And and see. I have one comment. This is the comment to end all comments. Love it. This is the whole point of today's lesson. Rhonda says the rose looks toll painted. Oh, there you go. <laughs> it looks like you knew what you were doing and you were kind of freestyling it, ma'am. <clears throat> okay, so we're right here. And I love that it's stenciled. Like you don't have to like, do you know how long it took me to know how to float color on a brush? So to get this shaded technique, it took me two years, two years of reading every book and everything that I could ever do. And that when I finally got it, the day I got it, I did a Snoopy dance in my living room and was twirling around and doing all the things. And I knew I, I knew I got it, right? And that day, I said, one day I will make videos because people have got to have lessons that they can visually see how to do the thing. And that's why we do what we do is because of that one technique being so hard to do um, that it took two years of trying. Like it wasn't even like I had to like learn how to use the dishwasher or something, <laughs> you know? How do you use the room? I don't care, you know? <laughs> but how do I paint a rose? I care. I want to do that. Okay, so I'm going to deepen a little bit. Go ahead. Okay, Vicki says, I have a question for Patty. She advocates. Ooh, Sounds like rain. it's pouring here. <laughs> we have pouring down the rain, guys. If um, you're missing us next week, it's because <laughs> we floated away. <laughs> we floated away. <laughs> okay, Vicki says, I have a question for Patty. She advocates that you should rub your brush off 15 times on the paper towel. She, however, only does it three to 10 times on the paper towel. So is this a matter of do as I say, not as I do? It's whatever works for you. And I think I, think I used to say 15. I think I'm... I think I'm a solid five now. That's mm -hmm. just a good starting point. So you, can I, you just, for it. yeah, your brush is gonna give, like, if you're a scooper, you're gonna need more. Yes. If you're a dry dibbler dabbler, mm -hmm. you're gonna need way less. Yeah. Um, I some people to... are pushers yes. when they're doing the thing. Um, Abby over at Boardroom, she, um, she does a straight line dab off thing that works really well. Um, I've tried it and I can't seem to master that. She's going to have to give me better lessons. Make a video. <clears throat> okay. Get some light colors. The light is giving me fits today. Oh, you know why? Oh, my lanta. 
Everybody ready to laugh? Please. We're gonna laugh together. This white is stick and restick. <laughs> <laughs> I I thought when I looked at it, I was like, Why is man, that not, that's not working. That is really like bubbled up. I was yeah. like, man, that's a good thick paint. Nope. <laughs> no. Nope. I used all the white and then I went to the stick and restick, and oh my. Yeah, I was going to put the um, stick and restick under to keep the stencil flat, and then I thought better of it and all that. So I wonder what kind of glue concoction I've got going on here. Ah, <sighs> yay. Yeah, I put that out right before we went on the thing. Okay. So, and that's why I switched to the bigger brush because I wasn't getting any effect. Hello. <laughs> My gosh. That's funny. I don't care who you are, that's funny. Okay. Maybe it'll show up now. So this layer six is a really interesting layer because it switches everything. So when you are um, doing it, this one, instead of being um, shaded to the inside, it shades to the outside and you're wondering like kind of what's gonna happen. So you wanna, and then notice that um, I'm switching my brush to be on this side as I'm doing that outer highlight. And that is so the base of the brush is on the plastic and not, and that's a, that's a pro tip right there. If you want to keep just a little bit of your shading and a little bit of your paint on your hole for your stencil, then you want to be on the plastic mostly. So I'm kind of painting the plastic in a way. <clears throat> I have a couple questions mm -hmm. about the shading that you're doing in the colors. Yeah. Being new at painting, how do you decide what colors are best to shade with or how do you decide on darks or light to shade? Okay, and super, super, super great because Oh, look at that. Look how pretty. Oh my gosh, what do we have left? My goodness, okay, let me get this on here and then I will answer that question. Last layer, guys. And get you lined up. It's really important to line up all the way around. Um, sometimes, um, and you'll see me doing that when I'm doing the drop shadow thing, I'll get the bottom lined up the top will be slightly skewed and um, and that'll send everything south for a hot second. So you want to make sure you look at the whole picture, not just where you're painting. Okay, shading and highlighting. I think the most important thing I could say is when you're painting like this rose, you're gonna start with the color that is the main body of the project, okay? This yellow grape. You're gonna start with the grapes that are the main color and you find the color that you like and then you're gonna work on either finding colors that shade or finding colors that highlight. So let's go into the magic drawer of colors. Um, if my yellow rose was this color, okay, I wouldn't choose this color to shade with. Does that make sense? So you would choose something in this family, okay? So I might go into here. Now, what if these are too far? You know how you have a strange relationship sometimes? What if your family split a little bit, right? And it's not close enough to be close family? Then you mix them, mm -hmm. okay? So that's how you're going to... And sometimes you might need to mix a little bit more of one or the other because it depends on the pigments they use. Sometimes you're just going to need to play. And, and that's... That's what I did with this is I played. And you did that, the color mixing in our video from last week with mm -hmm. the lake when yeah. you did the sail, um, yeah. the sailboat, she mixed the two colors together to make them more of in the same family. Yeah, and so when you're looking at, so I don't have a lake house and I don't really go to a lake. Um, uh, I did last week actually, <laughs> um, travel trailer. Um, but so I might not have a place that I can be like welcome to the lake. But these projects are projects because they're pretty, but they're projects because of lessons. So, and we try to put together YouTube playlists. Um, the YouTube channel is immensely, immensely um, helpful because we have playlists for technique. Mm -hmm. We have playlists for subject matter like Christmas. We have playlists for antique or farmhouse. We have playlists for animals. Like, like there's a whole bunch with the playlist. You would just want to check out those playlists. Okay. Highlight color. A lot of times with our highlight color, we can go into just straight up white and we could mix a little bit of these together and that's gonna make them into your highlight color. So 
Um, a lot of times white will do. Um, watch yourself. If you start leaning to something creamy, make sure, so like see how this is super white and then this is super creamy? You're gonna need to be doing some mixing because the, the temperature can sometimes, and this is where color gets crazy. The temperature can be something, like sometimes things are cool temperature and sometimes they're warm. This is a warm white, okay? This is a cool yellow. So if we're gonna use these two together, you gotta make them into a family. Mm -hmm. We have a lot more questions on shading and highlighting, so. Um, we're gonna have a lot of homework to do. This afternoon and tomorrow, Patty and I will sit down and go over some of these and write back to the ones we aren't able to get to on the live. Yeah, and then probably I would say um, that this will probably be something that um, inspires a whole new video, mm -hmm. okay. is what I would say. Okay, so we're gonna go on this last layer seven and layer seven has more shadow here. And highlight, over <laughs> stay out of the glue. <laughs> Highlighting with glue, who knew? Okay, this is that little tricky one. And then what else are we doing here? We are, now this is where this brush is way too big, but I think I can make it work. Okay. We did have someone ask, so you have your darker pink, your middle pink, mm -hmm. your lighter pink, and your white. Yes. Um, so on this, she... I'm really only using my base color mm -hmm. was the base, and then I skipped right over to that middle. I, I skipped this bubblegum mm -hmm. color and went right over to that mix, and then... I really haven't punched anything with this color. With the dark, dark. Yeah, and I'm gonna do the reveal on this guy, and this is our final one. Okay, and ta-da! Isn't that so cool? Yay! Look at all of the intricacies of those layers. Now, what I will say is um, I see a little bit of a stripy line right there. So what I can do is I can go in with my white, and I can just feather that and just fade it back. If you needed to fix something or if you needed to punch something up, mm -hmm. you can go backwards with these layers and set them back on. And you'd have to figure out which was the right layer because it, it really is, um, it doesn't make any sense right. except for the fact that it does work. Um, but you could go backwards if you, say, had one that got away from you for whatever reason. You weren't paying attention to the, the chart. You had to flip it in reverse like I did. And maybe you didn't reverse all of the colors. Um, those are some things that could go wrong. If you wanted to maybe like right there in that middle piece, I feel like that middle one right there, let me see if I can find him. He could be darker. Is that you? There you are. So I could go here, play it back over, go into the strong pink there. And then I could just give that just a little stipple. And then see how that just gave him a little bit more of a center right there. So that is how you use layered stencils. Um, the brushes are easy. Um, the wine was good. <laughs> <laughs> the lesson was fabulous. We've had so many people saying that they how how wonderful it is that yeah. how easy it to looks to be able to paint a rose um a rooster grapes pheasants birds butterflies all of the, every stencil that uh, we started out with all became a stencil because um because i know that painting bats is horrible mm -hmm. um it's just like the getting your brush to do the little thing for every little wing tip and get it Keep it sharp. I'm looking at spooky over mm -hmm. there. It's ridiculous. So, um, and I, I, I've been in classes where people cried because of roses. And so what we wanted to do was have the solution for you guys. So. And so I have one more comment mm -hmm. that we're going to end on today. Ooh. Our friend Joyce says, the rose is beautiful. Now I feel I can take on a rose project. Thank you, Patty. Yay! Have a great Tuesday, and we will see you next week. <laughs>